All right, uh, welcome to Chemical Thermodynamics. We're looking at uh, part three of our series in chemical thermodynamics. And um, <clears throat> real, really, um, actually pretty intuitive, easy stuff, um, not too complicated at all. So in, in this one, we're gonna look at two equations and kind of do a, a few calculations surrounding those. The first equation is one that we're actually uh, sort of familiar with. Oops. Um, and it is the equation for um, calculating um, enthalpy or entropy, we've, we've done it with enthalpy before, but with entropy of a particular reaction, whatever that reaction is that you'd want, um, right here we have the total entropy of the reaction is just simply um, the products added together minus uh, the entropy of the reactants added together. And you can find these values in the back of your book, easy enough to look up. And so let me give you a quick little example problem here. Um, we have uh, NH3, ammonia gas, plus hydrochloric gas, and that's going to go to ammonium chloride. Um, and so what do we do with that? Well, um, all we've got to do is add, look up the entropies in the back of the book. And so if I look up ammonia, and do make sure that you, you, you're careful because the states of matter, of course, we talked about in previous videos, those matter as far as as entropy, right? Because gas is going to have a higher entropy than like the liquid or the solid form. So when I look at the gas form, I have 192.5 uh, hydrochloric acid. I guess this is actually hydrogen chloride. And when it's in gas form, it's not an acid unless it's aqueous. So hydrogen chloride. And so I'm looking at 186.69, looking that up in the back of the book. And my ammonium chloride, look that up, and I have a measly 94.6. Notice uh, these two gases versus the solid gases, much higher entropy state than gases. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the products. So I've got the 94.6, and from that I'm going to subtract 192.5 and 186.69, and I'm going to come up with a total of 284. 0.59 for my entropy. And this, of course, is joules per uh, degree Kelvin, right? Uh, so th that's just a really simple way to uh, calculate the entropy of a reaction. Um, so what's happening in a reaction is you're going from uh, two separate uh, entropy states in this and combining them together into this one. And now notice the entropy in this case is negative, which means that this process we would not call spontaneous because uh, entropy is reversed. And of course, spontaneously, entropy desires to increase and become positive. So our negative entropy right here indicates to us that um, we have a non-spontaneous process. Um, OK, let's uh, look at another equation that comes into play. And this is called Gibbs free energy equation. So Gibbs free energy equation is the idea of um, how much energy do we actually have? And so free energy is, is um, the idea of do we, how much energy do we actually have available for us to use? And so that's what, what free energy is. Um, and so the actual free energy we have available is going to be the enthalpy. And remember enthalpy, is total energy. So enthalpy is basically our system's total energy. Now we don't get to use our total energy. Our, our total energy isn't free because uh, some of that energy is going to go into uh, moving the particles. So this is uh, temperature right here. Temperature is going to be essentially the kinetic energy of particles. And so some of that energy is going to go into kinetic energy, right? So that's what temperature is. So subtracting from our total energy, um, and this should make sense, should be pretty intuitive, is going to be the energy that goes into causing our particles to move. So kinetic energy, which is represented by temperature in Kelvin. So it must be in Kelvin. And then um, also subtracting from our total energy is whatever um, enthalpy or entropy, I'm sorry, whatever, whatever entropy happens. So our change in entropy multiplied by our kinetic energy is going to uh, subtract from our total uh, energy, which is our enthalpy, and that is going to give us our free energy. 
So let's quickly uh, do a little problem associated with this. I wrote this out here. Let's say we have a situation where our total enthalpy is 11.2 kilojoules and our total entropy is uh, negative 45.9 joules per, per degree Kelvin and our temperature is 25 degrees. Well, in this situation, let's look at this and uh, figure out a couple things real quick. So first of all, um, when we see our enthalpy is positive, we know that that means that this is endothermic, right? So endothermic. Um, and so right off the bat, we can see that we're probably not going to have any free energy. A free energy, of course, um, it's going to be similar to how we talk about enthalpy. If we have a negative change in G, so a negative change in G, is actually going to equal uh, the idea of, of extra energy coming off of this, right? Where, um, where energy is, is available uh, from this reaction. And that's kind of the way that, that things are going to want to go. They're going to want to go from, from a higher state of energy uh, to a lower state of energy. And when they go from a higher state of energy to a lower state of energy, well, some of that energy is, is, is released, right? And so we have negative change in G. And so we'd say that negative G is always spontaneous because um, that's kind of the natural order of things to seek going from a higher state to lower state and to get rid of that, that higher energy. Um, so endothermic processes by nature are almost always not spontaneous. And um, we have also entropy here. And we know that the direction for entropy is to go positive. And so we have a negative entropy. So right off the bat, we're going to we're going to probably just assume that uh, this is going to be a negative change in G. This is not going to be a spontaneous process, but let's go ahead and actually solve for free energy. So we have 11.2 kilojoules, and we insert that in here for our change in H. So our change in H is 11.2 kilojoules. Our temperature, 25 degrees, is going to calculate out to 298, because remember, we have to use Kelvin, because what we're concerned about is the kinetic energy. We want to know the actual movement of those particles. So we put in our 298. We multiply that times our entropy. Now, in order for this equation to work, we have to have everything in the same unit. Now notice entropy is expressed in joules. So when you insert it into the Gibbs free energy equation, you are going to want to convert it to kilojoules. You simply do that by dividing by 1,000. So to convert 45.9 to kilojoules, we divide by 1,000, giving us 0 0.0459. It's a negative, so we make sure to add that negative. So when I take 11.2 and I subtract 298 times negative 0 0.0459, I get a total free energy of 24.88. And so what that's actually telling me is that um, this is going to absorb energy in the form of 24.88. Um, so this process, uh, we would con whatever, whatever is causing this situation right here, we would conclude is not spontaneous and we would also conclude that um, that it's endothermic and uh, so there, there's lots of things you can you can tell about it um, all right uh, now let's look at the idea of of um, entropy or uh, free energy change in a reaction well just like we looked at um, entropy change in a reaction it's the same thing so whatever free energy the products have subtracted from the free energy of formation for the reactants is going to give us our total free energy for a reaction. Now, free energy, just the same, can be looked up in the back of the book, and you can assign that to things. Um, so let's go ahead and, uh, and look at a problem real quick. So here we have um, a little phosphorus, oxygen, chlorine, and um, so this is a gas right here. And so we, com we degrade this or decompose this down to uh, PCl3 and um, O2. Of course, so these, these, this one gas becomes two gases, and we have the equation balanced right here. Right? And so, um, so what we're going to do is we're going to look at um, the total enthalpy change for this reaction. So our total enthalpy change for this reaction, we're going to be using uh, Gibbs free energy equation right here. The total enthalpy change for this reaction is 572 kilojoules, and our entropy change is 19.84, and our temperature is 298. So uh, let's go ahead and plug that in. 
we plug that in and what we find is that 572 is our, is our h minus 298 times 0 0.091984 and we have to of course convert that to kilojoules because it's in joules right here and we want it to work out. Our total change in free energy is a positive 566, right? So what can we assume? Well, we can assume that this is not a spontaneous process uh, because free energy is positive. Um, but what would make this um, what would make this into a spontaneous process? Um, well, you can't change the enthalpy you know, because the energies are associated with the bonds, and so we can't change that. Um, we can't change the entropy because those are that's also associated with the reformation and formation of those bonds. But one thing we could change in our reaction is our temperature. So the question might be asked, at what temperature would this reaction start to become spontaneous? Well, you can imagine that this is going to take a really, really, really high temperature. But it's an easy enough situation to solve because at, at zero, at free energy equaling zero, that's going to be the point where we're going to start to shift over to spontaneous process, right? Because any negative change in G is spontaneous. Um, so what we do is we'd add a zero in here. Uh, we'd take our 572 and because we want to find out what is the temperature at which we get to this change in energy, change in free energy being zero. Um, so we're going to subtract our temperature. We have that as an unknown and we're going to multiply that times our entropy right here. Um, okay, so uh, work this out, solve for T and uh, T is uh, going to equal 28 1,830 degrees Kelvin. Wow, so um, very, very high temperature. But from this, you can see that um, even if you have a really high enthalpy, even if you have a huge um, endothermic process, a very, very, very endothermic process requiring a lot of energy, if the temperature is high enough, um, you can actually uh, overcome a high enthalpy with um, a high temperature. So um, just because the enthalpy is positive doesn't mean that the process is going to be spontaneous, I mean non-spontaneous, um, and just because the enthalpy is, is negative. So there's, um, there, there is a little bit of leeway in there, and actually the temperature itself is the thing that, that causes that. So, so what we would say is that as soon as my temperature gets around uh, 28,000 degrees Kelvin, um, it's going to start becoming spontaneous. All right, so hopefully that helps with this. And I didn't uh, solve any uh, problems using this um, because it's simple enough. You're just plugging in the, the numbers. It's uh, exactly the same as what we did here. You look up the numbers, plug them in, and subtract them. I didn't think that that uh, needed too much explanation. All right, um, so hopefully this gives you a good idea of spontaneity, Gibbs free energy, and how we use that to actually discover spontaneity. So with Gibbs free energy, if it's negative, you know for sure it's spontaneous. If it's positive, you know for sure it's non-spontaneous. And if it's zero, it's at equilibrium. It's not going to be um, going either direction or actually what we'd say it's going equally both directions. So we actually that's what we solved for was the equilibrium state right here when we did this. Okay.